Hey guys, Scott Jeske here. I wanted to do as quickly as I can a video about the new Sony a7 III and particularly about a brand new feature in this camera that I think is an absolute game changer and that personally, I could be totally wrong about this, but I think that Sony might not have intended to be a game changer in the way that I am using it, but uh, we'll dive right in. Okay, so starting off, um, I had done a lot of research on uh, the a7 III. I was in the market to buy a new camera, and obviously there's a huge gap between the you know sub $3,000 cameras and the uh, cameras that are over $7,000, um, you know, the Red Scarlets or the C300 Mark II, et cetera, et cetera. And for me, one of the biggest things I was looking for was how do I get 4K resolution, but also get the kind of color that I see coming out of like a C100 Mark II, um, uh, just very rich, uh, complex colors, very complex skin tones. Um, so the reason I have this clip up from the film Looper is because um, I love the way this movie looks, and it for me is a um, it's a great look at what makes film uh, unique to digital, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So if you look at this frame of Paul Dano and you look at his face, um, typically with a digital camera. Granted, this is not a hard and fast rule. There are digital cameras now that have incredibly beautiful and complex colors. But um, a lot of the times they'll they'll throw a LUT on the image to try to make it look more filmic. Or they're just trying to make it look like what it is, digital. And my biggest beef uh, with kind of sloppy handling of color is that you lose all this complexity in the skin tones. And I think that's like one of the biggest giveaways of film versus digital. So if you look at this image... I think this is very unique to film, and I'm sure there was some DI coloring um, as well to give credit to, but um, just look at all the com complexity here. You've got you've got pinks, you've got this lighter, kind of softer tone, you've got these kind of yellow tones in his skin here, um, uh, more kind of reds in his lips. It's just, it's beautiful tones that are very unique to film. So what I was looking for is the higher end cameras obviously are closer to this because they have much better color and short of raw you have 10 bit i know the new gh5s has 10 bit but that was out of my budget range sadly i had read all this interesting stuff about the a7 III and that it had um much better color science much more pleasing um color and so i got really stoked about it um saw nothing but amazing reviews about the camera and i bought the camera well, the camera showed up two days ago. I was super excited. I immediately started shooting some tests. And to be honest, I was very, very disappointed initially. And I'll show you why. So I started doing some S-Log3 versus Cine4 versus S-Log2 tests because I wanted to see how do I get the most dynamic range but also get pleasing color and skin tones. So here, um, this is a scene that has not a ton of color but it, it, a good amount of it's a good opportunity to show a camera's dynamic range which obviously you know it's per performing beautifully beautifully here but let me show you where I got uh shall we say disappointed here we have the original s-log3 shot it's it's amazing how much time dy dynamic range we're capturing here so I added a s-log3 specific LUT. Um, it's the same film stock that they shot the film looper on. Um, obviously, it's not going to look exactly the same because the lighting conditions, the wardrobe, etc. are all totally different. You get the idea. So I have my LUT. I did some color correction to get the shadows and saturations roughly where I wanted them. And what was so disappointing to me, if you look at this image in full screen, is how much just ugly artifacting is going on here. Um, the skin tones are obviously a complete mess. The shadows and these kind of nebulous areas of the frame are just a complete mess. You can see all these weird blue and red artifacts. Uh, uh, I think the camera finds areas where it's like, I don't have enough color information. 
I don't have enough detail. I don't know what this is. So I'm just going to fill in the blanks with this crap. And it looks so gross and it's very disheartening because um, Sony advertises 16 stops of dynamic range. And sure, you're capturing that. But in order to make that work, you you sacrifice any color saturation and any color detail that you might be hoping for, especially with 8-bit. Obviously, they probably know this to be the case, but they don't advertise it. So when they say you're getting 16 stops of dynamic range, that's not really going to be the case in the end. Or maybe you are, but you're getting an ugly as crap image. And I've seen a lot of people, in fact, you look at most uh, YouTube videos with this camera or with any, the A7S II, S-Log3, they look like this. It's a mess, you know? Um, on a small screen, you can't really tell, but it's it's really ugly, it's really messy, and it's very disheartening. So I reached the point where I um, spoke with my wife and I was like, hey, honestly, this it stinks, but this camera, I might have to return it. Um, and I guess it's just, I got what I paid for and maybe I need to come up with, you know, a finance plan to buy a much nicer camera that has much more complicated color. So this is where I was at until I experimented with this new feature of the camera, hybrid log gamma. Now, at first I wasn't playing with hybrid log gamma because I had watched videos that basically said, this is not ideal for color grading. You can't really do anything with this in color grading. The image falls apart, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know what those people were doing or how they were grading it. And the thing is with hybrid log gamma is it's, it's designed for TVs. It's designed for new high dynamic range TVs. So it's, it's essentially like a Dolby Vision thing. It's a Rec 2020 color space, which basically means you have a super, super wide color and exposure gamut. And if you have a high dynamic range TV, the TV can display all of this complexity within the frame and all of this broad and deep color gamut. Um, so that's what it's intended for. And so if you pull it into an editor like this, it's going to look like this. It's going to be super bright and bizarre looking because this screen basically can't handle the color gamut. If you were to watch this on a TV, it would look beautiful and perfect. So at first I was like put off by this and I was like, what is this? Then I started playing with it. So what I did, and again, I don't know if this is um, <laughs> the intention of this profile, but it's absolutely amazing. Um, so I used just an S-Log to um, LUT, but I specified the input to be Rec 2020 Hybrid Log Gamma, and then the output to be Rec 709. So I basically told this color space to work within my Rec 709 color space. Now let's look at what you can do with exposure, saturation, etc. So. Again, starting off, this is kind of where you're at. It's super exposed, overexposed. But look at this. This is just absolutely amazing. I'm just playing with the highlights here. I can bring this down. And the image is just, there's so much range in the image. Everything in the image is being preserved in this beautiful way. And there's so much detail. In the same way, I can pull the blacks down. There's still so much preserved detail. Look at this. This is just absolutely unbelievable. It's like working with a raw image, a raw photograph image. So that's mind blowing. Now look at the saturation. I can bring the saturation up to here. No problem. The image is still holding together beautifully. Now let's look at the same thing on S-Log. And I gotta say, S-Log, as much as I hate it, <laughs> it performed decently well in the sunlight. S-Log favors overexposure, I get that. Um, so it performed okay. So I used the proper LUT for S-Log 3. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like without. Super flat, theoretically getting all the same information. But you can see S-Log 3, this is another thing that drives me nuts. It's like super purple in the shadows. And sometimes you can't get this back. So if you're filming like a face or something, you're stuck with this. Okay, so I apply the LUT. Okay, I apply some vibrancy so the I can kind of boost the saturation without completely like making the image fall apart. 
but now let's play with the colors just so you can get an idea of what's going on here. So I'm just going to leave the saturation here because this is kind of the breaking point. Um, let's look at the exposure. You can see the um, shadows are like all the way down here and the highlights are all the way up here. So like you really have to push the image basically as far as you can go. So this is where it starts and basically it'll make it look normal. I need this all the way here and this all the way here. And, and look at that. So remember how I was playing with the highlights before and it was just affecting the highlights, but all the shadows were remaining the same, much like on a raw image. Here, the entire image just, if it'll load, follows suit. See how the whole entire image is getting darker? That's garbage. Okay. So let me show you an image where you can see a little more of this. Here I have my hybrid log gamma. Here I have my S log three. S log three is not absolutely terrible here, but again, look how far I had to push my exposure. Look how far I had to push my um, shadows. And then when I pull this up, this is just a mess. Look at all this color artifacting. And still, I don't have much color in this image. This this image is supposed to be much more vibrant and colorful. And it's like Saving Private Ryan or something. Like, it's very desaturated. Okay, here's my hybrid log gamma. Obviously, the exposure is pushed all the way down because it's not entirely intended for this. But the flexibility is just unreal. Like... Everything is still within the space. I can, it's just beautiful. And then I can, let's punch up that saturation. Let's take a look at it. You can see where there was all this artifacting on S log three, there's just complexity here. You can see all the complexity. There's much more saturation. Um, it's a slightly overcast day, so it's going to look kind of white anyway. But this is a little strange, but I'm sure I can figure that out. And then let's look at the same shot. So I use this. There's this LUT that basically is the same um, film stock that they use um, in E.T. or Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's an old 80s film stock. And basically, with most images it completely will just break the image apart because it's very saturated and so i put it on my um s log three and this was about as good as i could get i had to push the exposure all the way up here my saturation is pushed really far the um it's this disgusting purple kind of thing going on which, sure, I can, yeah, okay, I can kind of grade that out a little bit. Um, then let's pull it up. This is so bad. If you can see this color artifacting, this is so bad. You've got these weird, like, green splotches, these purple splotches. Like, it's just an absolute mess. And, and even still, like, yeah, it's just really grainy and the image is just broken apart. And I'm hoping to do a video where I can show you guys skin tones because that's like, that's the most important thing and is the most disheartening thing for S-Log. Okay. So everything's within exposure. Um, there's a lot of dynamic range. There's a lot of color range. And look at all the complexity here in the sidewalk with no splotchiness, no ugliness, just really tight, fine, beautiful noise. It looks like film. Now let's look at what's going on with the exposure here. Still, I have all this flexibility. I can make it a much brighter looking day. Even that, you know, it's a little hot, but like it looks normal. I can bring it down. I can dial back the saturation if I want. And the image stays together. So anyway, I hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope this gets you jazzed about the a7 III. This is not to disparage Sony. Um, 
this is actually to congratulate them because I think up until this point, um, people have been using S log three blindly because they think that it gives them all this flexibility in post when actually I think it completely destroys your image in post and, um, takes you to a place where you have no more options because your image gets completely degraded. Hybrid log gamma is absolutely amazing because it's like working with raw, except it takes way less um, space on your hard drives and your computer. And again, the beauty of this is I can export this in a rec 709 color space and display it normally. And um, just the way you would any footage. And I'm still retaining all this glorious color detail. So hope this was helpful. I know it was super long, but um, look out for more videos coming up because I'm going to be doing a ton of tests, uh, hopefully with, you know, actual models and um, getting some skin tones and different lighting situations, low light, sunlight, what have you. And I'm really going to put this camera through the paces, but I am keeping this camera. Um, I love it now that I've found this feature. I don't know if this was the intention, but thank you, Sony. This is awesome. And also please uh, subscribe to this channel so you can see what's coming next because again, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these kinds of videos and um, also showing you um, more comparisons of the actual footage. Thanks.